more boots for boys. We're running out of room for boots for boys. Don't need any more boots. Thanks for all the boots, everybody. How you doing? Welcome to the snap vlog. So what's going on? Well, it's the uh, end of the weekend, and I'm just catching up on those jobs you do. Right now, I'm cooking up a feed. First meal of the day. What's cooking? Let's have a look at this. Rightio. Well, that's a nice bit of fellow backstrap right there. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Wayne Robertson. Wayne shot that sucker. What else we got going on? Well, we've got some uh, bacon, some nitrate-free bacon there, and some capsicum, one red capsicum, and some garlic. And we're going to have our greens. We've got some, geez, that's not boiling very well. Just starting to, some leeks and some broccoli. Just working through our puppies, which right now is um, looking good. They're all pretty healthy. We're having a sleep right now. Mum's doing a good job, aren't you, Mum, eh? Hell yeah, you're doing a good job. Anyway, uh, this uh, snap vlog is just one of those. It's going to be a whole lot of bits and pieces I've put together over the last couple of days. So we'll tie all those into this video. Hope you enjoy it. Sit back and watch a bit of my uh, my life. See you in the vlog. So if you're doing OMAD, that's one meal a day, you want to make sure you've got a good meal. And this is just part of my meal. I've also got a big salad bowl with about eight cups of vegetables. But in here I've got some brie cheese, which is melting nicely on the leeks and the broccoli. My capsicum is roasted over the hot plate. Uh, bacon. And the main star of the attraction tonight, of course, is this on the outside. These medallions. Nice fellow deer. Shot by me mate Wayne. So that'll be the first uh, part of my dinner, and then the rest will just be a big bowl of salad. Good, chomping and chewing. How's it taste? Well, let's do the taste test. This is the bit that uh, this is the bit I love. And of course, naturally, I'm going to start off with one of these suckers. Oh man. The food of kings. This is my new retriever. Pace, fetch. Poe, leave the ducks. Come back here. Can see you sleeping off, mate. Pace, come. Come on. Good boy. Come on, Pace. Come on. Pace, come. Pace, drop. That's not drop. Pace, come. Good boy. Leave it. Sit. Good dog. The question is, could Pace become a retriever? A duck dog? Pine cone. Fish it. Fish it. It's a long way out. Fish it. He's going for it. What's going on, Pace? Can't even see it. He's tracking towards it. No, he's lost it. Where's going, Pace? Other way, mate. Keep going. Good boy Pace, good boy Pace, good dog, good boy Pace, good boy, good dog, good boy Pace. Little legs going 100 mile hour, he's going hard, good boy Pace, come on Pace, come on, come on, good dog, good boy, drop, Pace, drop, drop, uh uh, drop, good to drop it mate, mm -hmm. can we try that again, leave it, don't touch. Bit of trail barking going on there. Where's he going, Pace? Hey? Good dog. Well, Paradise Ducks had about between seven and nine babies on the pond. And they got reduced to one, which did survive. The mallards was a breeding pair down there, and they'll zoom in. You can see in that uh, right hand corner of the beach there, there's a, a male uh, on, the, on the beach, and there's a female too. I'll have to zoom in closer to see that. But they lost all their babies. And then to the left hand side of the screen is the native ducks, which had about seven and four still survived and I put that down to the fact that I took out the pukekos that were hanging around the beach killing them all so it was like taking away one species so one could survive but shaky holding on the phone there 
swing back out again pretty hard to uh, to hold it steady that far away because we're quite far off but there they go so that's really good that they have survived they're a native duck and to date every year the Pukekos have killed all their babies and those guys are now five days old so they may make it oh boy this one here keeps on exploring the outside of the cage and he's moving around the most his legs are working the best he can walk the best they're starting to stand up now almost and they're growling and barking and all the eyes are open these guys are really starting to come, come alive. Growling, barking. Listen to that noise. Yeah. Hey, mate. This guy's ranging out. Just seen mum outside the cage. going on. Walking too pretty well, that one. Stuck under the crash bar over there. Trying to get away from it all. This little girl's on the fine. She can see mum. She can see mum just out here, you see. She thinks, yep, I can smell her. I want some milk. Almost sorted. Sorted. Such a cool little motor. Can really get up the plane too. It goes pretty good. We're tearing along, man. This little little boat goes bloody fast for a three three and a half horsepower. It's banging it. see any damage on the back of the houseboat because it was actually apparently touching that boat in front of it at the back end. I can't see where it's been hitting or anything so it must be just touching lightly. But we'll go, we'll go aboard it anyway and just uh, check she's all sweet, tickety boot. I like to come out here most days and check on it. I'm going to put this, uh, this phone down and try and uh, creep up in here. There we go. Got two of those motors, Yamaha, 10 horsepower. She fits quite nicely down there. Welcome to the houseboat. And that's the little nest I found the other day. Today I'm just doing little jobs like this, the fish board, give it a clean down. This last time I forgot to. If you don't get on top of these jobs, they just get worse and worse and worse. Boom! Just like that. Bait board clean. I can now fillet fish on that, but I do want to put a coat of paint on that. Next job will be to secure this around the outside here. It needs a brace. You can see it's not totally stable. It moves. It moves down here. Now there's bolts that you can tighten up in there. There's one in there, but I think it needs a, a brace in here. Just a... Um, something to stop it from doing that and I won't have it, the brace come out too far otherwise you'll, you'll trip on it but just something that goes from there to there on that angle doesn't need much uh, maybe some diagonal bracing no I don't think so but that will secure it a bit it's getting a bit wobbly next job is to clean out the gas bottle but as you can see it's got water in it and it's rusty gas bottles on boats or on caravans or house trucks are always dangerous because you get gas leaking and you get fires and explosion. So I'm going to clean that out for a kickoff. Pretty grubby down here. Yeah, 
every boat needs a sponge. It's the best tool for getting jobs like this cleaned up, where there's no way you can get the water out. Well, there is actually a drain down there, but this is the easier way. Just uh, in your bucket. Just about kick the bucket. Not ready to kick the bucket yet. You can see what's coming out of it. Looks good. Rightio. This is the gas bottle bait. Cleaned out enough, and isn't this clever how this works? That just goes back down on... Well, it's supposed to go down there. Oh, yep. Yeah. There we go. The old man, he's ingenious the things he's made. And this one here goes under here like this. So she's all housed in. We can give this a bit of a clean now. Back down. Let's get the scrub. I've got the uh, front door open out here. Wind's blowing in. So the wind's blowing right down the hallway. And I've got, uh, well, this is my room here. And there goes Ray Hardcastle's painting. Woohoo! I love that man. Thanks, Ray. Gonna open this one day before I clean it and let some air come under here. So we had birds nesting in the cabin next door and they made a bloody mess. Uh, Jody came out and helped me clean the bird shit off the floor. This is the room they nested in. I've cleaned some away, but there's still more to do. It's a lot better than it was. And I put a blanket over, but they're not coming anymore because I stuffed up their hole with a, a towel. So Around here's the bathroom, there's the toilet. One of the bathrooms, there's two on this boat, the toilet and shower, it's got paint in and there's some work being done. Got to fit this bilge pump somewhere. Dad, where does that go? Tell me please. I've seen it here, I'm not sure what it's in here, if it's a new pump. And there's the wee basin. And isn't it clever how Dad's made the, the windows? These are just buckets, he's cut the buckets out. It's, a, it's just a bucket and he's like screwed that in. It's clever. Little jobs like this is going to be wired up and fitted in still. Uh, that's not switched on the power. But you know, it's a bloody awesome setup. There's the there's the caliphant to heat the water. So each one of the cabins has its own shower and toilet. Think about that. So when I've got a guest staying on board, they've got their own privacy. This will be my toilet here. And the shower, I've got the hatch off the floor right now because there's a leak in here which I've plugged up, but I need to get this out onto water and get it fixed properly. And this this is its own private little uh sort of ensuite with a caliphant and that's my bed there and skylight up here so much work needs to be done to get it back to tidy how it is and so many little jobs little jobs like the switch here just not what not screwed in and i come out here every chance i get now to do a little bit but i'm going to need some help on it and dayla my daughter i'm going to be employing her so while i'm carrying on cleaning here what i'm going to do is just let all the wind blow through here and and air it out Next job is this. You see the swallow outside wanting to come in. They've been hanging around here. There they go. There's the family. I don't know if you saw that. They just flew out there now. I don't want them nesting on here again. They'll try to, but they're not allowed to. Here they come back. There's four of them. There they go. There's the mum and the dad just out the window. I'll zoom in a bit. Can you see them there? There they go. How are you going? They love the houseboat, but I don't want them on it. So, dishes. This whole kitchen area has become messy. All this. So next job is to clean all this up. And there goes my mate Laurie just going in. Probably just caught a feed of snapper. Drawers and cupboards. Cupboards which the birds have managed to shit on. There's bird shit everywhere from those the swallows that came in here shit on everything. So we're sort of wiping as we go along. And uh, the thing about bird shit is it contains acid that destroys stuff. Well, these cupboards here, Dad's made them out of something really tough, so I think they're going to be okay. And that's where we're putting our stuff. Well, look at this plates just go on there. It's got it all made perfectly. Cups, storage. Kitchen looking a bit tidier in there. I've still got to tidy up the stove in this corner over here, but basically uh, one job at a time. It's a neat little kitchen because you look out across the water when you're at the sink here doing all your stuff. That's your view. <laughs> what a view, eh? And there's your back door out there. It's pretty cool. So I need to uh, need to clean this up, but that's another job for another day. But I am going to take this fry pan though because it's my good skillet. I'm going to take that home. I'm not sure what that is on the beach over there, but uh, can you guys see that? Is that a boy? Don't know. I'll go and check that out, eh? Happy days! 
check that out. Just about there. Right there. That's a, uh, hopefully it's a, um, a good condition muscle boy. It looks like it is. They're worth a lot of money. And they're usable. You can use it for a flotation device, for a raft. Or I could cut it in half and use it for a wee garden for herbs and spices or lettuces and stuff. And that's washed up down the beach. If it, if it doesn't belong to anybody, like it's done as mooring or something, I'll grab that. I don't think it's anybody's, I think it's just lost. It's come a drift from the last storm we had. That's a good score. Treasure! That's valuable. I can tie it probably in my boat, or maybe I can. I don't think it can fit in my boat, I think it's too small. Has it got any holes in it? Is it damaged? Oh, it could be. Yeah, it could be. Oh, yeah, it's full of water. Oh, bugger. Can't even move it. It's absolutely so heavy. Oh, I can't budge it. Holy shit. I got all excited for nothing, it's buggered. Maybe it's full of water, I don't know, but it can't be moved. Leverage, because I sure can't turn it over like it is. But it's so heavy. So hopefully we can jam this in it and move it. Oh, it's not gonna work. Need a bigger stick. the water coming in. Could have a hole somewhere in it, don't it? Tide's coming up, my boat will be going out to sea very soon. Well, it's not leaking. Water came into it, there's got to be a hole somewhere, doesn't there? Ah, that must be a little leak there. How's that work? Bag of iron, eh? Guess you need a tool to take that off. It's got water on it though. Can somebody who works with those educate me? Is it supposed to be filled with water and that's a bung you take out to put water in it to submerge it for something, I don't know. I've never seen one like that. I'm going to leave it there because A, my boat's going to disappear any minute because the tide's coming in. B, I've got no rope or tools or anything to drag it. And I, I could roll it at the beach, but what'll happen is it'll just it'll hang around here for a while. I'll come back if I can, but I think uh, it's not what I thought it was. I thought it was a... A muscle float that was in good condition with uh, one I could just take away and use it as a buoy or a flotation device for a raft but I can't. Anyway I've got, got three at home already so I don't really need it. Just get a bit excited. Okay, time to piss off. Holy shit! Look at this hail! Holy fuck! Mushroom and I are going for a hunt. You reckon we're going still, yeah. mate? Yeah. <laughs> you reckon? Yeah. We're just getting ready to go for a hunt and the hail is coming down like, fuck me! Jeez! Hail and then rain. And it's coming down fast, man. Hey, Pope. Okay, mate, you get scared there. Good deal. It's okay, mate. Let's try those, mate. See how those ones go. They're going to be better than what you've got on your feet now. Because what yeah. you've got on your feet now has got bloody holes in it, isn't it? Yep.
Do they fit or are they too tight? They're a wee bit tight, but they're not. Okay. They're, they're not. My toes ain't at the end or anything. Mm, okay. Right, do you want to try some other ones on? You don't want tight, mate. Try these ones on here. We've got plenty of boots of boys. These ones I thought were bigger than what you got on, but they look smaller than those ones. How do they feel? They're a lot looser than what those are ones they? are. Right, put those yeah. on, mate. You sort of... We've got some camo stuff here that um, got uh, uh, donated by Heck. Oh, yeah. And also by Scott Wilson. Might be kind of cool to take this just for some change of clothes if it get wet. Because you haven't got a full change of clothes today, have you? No, I don't bring any clothes. Okay. Those boots all right? Yeah, good. Awesome, sort of. Howdy, Po. Here, take these two, mate. Oh, yeah. You can kick those. Oh, cheers for that. Yeah, that's uh, good to have after we've been in the bush, because you're going to get wet anyway. Mm. Heat her up. And kick her in the guts. Sounds good. We're in the uh, dirty old Land Cruiser. Because the Hilux has got bull tyres and no warrant of fitness. Shut up, Pace! He's excited because we're going hunting. You probably remember this rooster here, Mushroom. Mushroom is going to be 16, what, soon? Next Saturday. Next Saturday? Yeah. Holy shit! He's been with me since he was like 14 and he's already 16 and... You know, we only keep boys till our 16, well, till our 17 actually, 16th year, so this will be his last year with us. Face! What is it you mean? That'll do! We've had extreme weather today, we've had hail, we've had rain, we've had wind, more rain, and now we've got hot sun. In fact, so hot I won't be running any rip gear on the dogs other than the collars I've got on. I wanted to suit Pace up because he gets himself into trouble, but it's just too hot to run rip gear, so... We're running the gauntlet a bit, running him without it, but he had overheat in this heat. We're in the hunt zone now, we're still climbing. We've been going for about oh, probably 10 minutes up here almost. And you see Jody's in the truck in front of us sitting there. We're getting into some hunt very soon. This is all open pine where uh, it meets native on the other side. So it's a good place for pigs. A lot of toot. A lot of fern, a lot of bracken, plenty of gorse, and the occasional pig comes out here too. Hey, pink. Side of pink, are you? Hey, Dot. Hey, Mick. Get in. Good deal. You want to let my two out there, Mushroom? Come on. Yeah, they've done a circle, and they're coming back down the track. They're coming straight back down site. Yeah, I reckon they're on, eh? They're doing a circle there. They hit something. It's a classic uh, pig, pig uh, tracking that. Circles like that, be in front. Pig sneaking out just down here. Here it's sneaking through the bush. So the current status now is that Dot is 690 out in front of us. All the other dogs back in. Bee's just coming now behind me, just come in. 
Uh, we've whistled them in because of that area, but Dot's still on some scent. One stage she was moving 15k per hour. Pace, get in. Good boy, B. Good boy. Pretty hot. I see a bit of rooting down there. That's pretty fresh too. Well, we're just going to have to wait now and see what Dot does. She likes to go and hunt on her own. Good run for the dogs. So, the hunt didn't quite turn out as well as we would have liked. We ended up waiting for a couple of hours, or more than probably three hours, wasn't it? Waiting yeah. for Dot. And uh, using all our valuable time waiting for a dog to come back in while the rest went hunting. Tomorrow's another day. Hope you enjoyed the clip. Be good, can't be good, be careful. See you later. I might actually give uh, Jody more dogs. So tomorrow, Jody's going to take out B and Pace and I'll give them some gear because uh, my mate Patrick, young Patrick, who I used to take out, he's going out in the morning. I was supposed to be going with him, but I've just run out of time as far as work goes. So I'm going to have to turn down a hunt, which isn't great, but that's part of the joys of running a YouTube channel. So I'll leave Pace and B with, with uh, young Jody. And you're talking about Patrick, and I'll give him a GoPro, so if he gets any footage out, you'll be watching it after I'm finished talking. Hopefully he does, because he's bloody good, Jody. Oh, we're in the cell phone range now. That's all my messages. It's, giving, it's getting back and closer to civilization.